What's up guys? Well today I thought I'd fill in yet another follow-up video after posting the video of the Hoover wind tunnel bag list with the twin chamber system I figured I'd follow it up with the later style of that vacuum. Here I have a Hoover wind tunnel anniversary edition bagless upright vacuum with the legendary twin chamber system although this one has been slightly upgraded for the anniversary series. For those of you who don't know, the anniversary edition for the Hoover Wind Tunnels was basically them completely changing color schemes and keeping the old school design of the vacuum that is really known to outlast even, even today's Hoover cleaners that are made under under this TTI name, which, speaking of which, this vacuum was made in the post-TTI buyout. But luckily, the whole design of the vacuum hasn't changed a bit. The only thing they changed is the motor design. So now let's go ahead and take a walk through the machine. And the Anniversary Edition wind tunnel has this a little bit different hood design compared to the original bagless wind tunnels. It, as you can see, it looks pretty much the same design like on the bagged version. And it's got this chrome hood plate right here covering up part of the wind tunnel chamber. And this is a very nice silver color. It is a little bit scrape, it does have a bit of scrapes and scuffs down here just from normal use. And there was another version of this vacuum that was bronze and that one didn't have the embedded dirt finder. But this is, but it was pretty much the same design machine. So right here you do have your carpet height adjustment. You do have a 12 amp motor and HEPA filtration. Right here, you do have your embedded dirt finder. Green means clean. Right here is the switch for your sensitivity. I always like to leave it on the regular setting just so I don't overload the system. So right up here is your twin chamber system. So let's go ahead and remove this little locking tab right here. This little portion will slide up when you remove that locking tab. Then pull up and out to gain access to your dirt bin. And to open the dirt bin is kind of tricky. There, It is actually latched down in this version, so you can't just pull the lid straight off. So you have to pull back and pull up on this tab. And this back portion is on a hinge, so you won't lose it, which is a, quite a nice touch. So anyway, right here, there is a little bit of dust dust on the mesh screen because I have been using this to try and test it out because this thing runs amazing. You will also notice there is another latch right here and that's to pull the filter out. There's your filter right there. Which, and to put it back in, just simply line the tabs up and just slide it back in place. Pops down like so. And you will notice there is this nice little tab right here. And if you push it, the bottom trap door will pop open. And that's how you can empty your dirt bit, your dirt out, which is much better than the old style where you have to pull the cap off and then dump it out that way. And you will notice what just popped out right here is actually the filter crank. So basically you just turn turn it clockwise and you can actually clean off your filter this way. And you can see right here there's a little plastic pick in there that picks at the filter when you turn the crank. You can just flip it back in and then put your dustbin back in. This is a much more convenient design compared to the old one. So right down here is a small, another pre-motor filter, as if this big HEPA pre-motor filter wasn't enough. Put the little locking tab back on. 
So back here, you do have your post motor filter. This one is very dust. It was very caked up with what looks to be carbon from the motor. So this definitely will need a replacement, which you could actually get a HEPA media replacement for this. I've actually taken one of the the true HEPA media filters out of my bagged wind tunnel self-propelled and it just fit right in place. There was no clearance issues or anything. So anyway, let's flip the machine down to look at the underside. Right here is its brush roll. This is an, an original brush roll, I will add. It's a Cleveland Wood Products brush roll. It's a wooden roller brush with, uh, with stiff nylon bristles. This is, can be offered as a replacement to even your older wind tunnel brush roll. CWP also makes brush rolls for Kirby's. That's one fun note. So you can imagine how, how good of quality these things are. They got seal ball bearings on both sides. And they even make replacement brush rolls for older Hoover Elites, and I think even the Hoover Convertibles as well. So now let's go ahead and turn this thing on its side and show you the model number. Right here, it's Hoover Cleaner model U5786-900. 120 volts, 60 hertz, 12 amps. Made by the Hoover Company in Glen Willow, Ohio. Made in Mexico. Even though it is made in Mexico, this thing is much better built than the Chinese-made crap that Hoover makes today. Well, you also will notice right here the, the, the edge cleaning bristles. They aren't colored in red like the old model because Hoover went cheap in the manufacturing. They just made them in plain black. So, anyway, let's go ahead and look at some of the attachments. You have two extension wands on this vacuum and and the back extension wand holds your nice long crevice tool. This is not original. I just robbed this from another vacuum for the sake of this video. And you do have a, a hose right here, which is fairly long. You can almost stretch to the other side of the room. Well, actually, not really, it's not the longest. And in my opinion, this, this hose is not the best of quality. Because I think the older ones had a, made, had a much better hose. So up top here, you do have your upholstery tool, your dusting brush, and your pet hair turbo tool which a lot of people don't like the design of these because they think they don't perform well, but I think they, they're they actually good. Shut that. I like that prominent Hoover symbol right up front there. And up top here on the handle, you do have your power switch up there and this nice loop handle design it's a little bit different than the than the bagged wind tunnels. And so now on the back here, let's go ahead and release the cord. This is quite a long cord. I think it's probably about in the 30 foot range. Now let's go ahead and plug it in. And one other thing I would like to point out on this thing is that there is actually a little mechanical valve inside the head of the vacuum that actually diverts the suction to the hose when the vacuum is in the upright position. And when you recline the vacuum back, it opens the valve up and now all the suction goes to your vacuum head, which is actually pretty nice and you will notice it's actually operated by a little mechanical spring right down there. So when you recline the vacuum back, the spring gets tension and pulls back. Sometimes when, when the vacuum ages, sometimes 
that's that spring can get stiff and sometimes the vacuum won't recline back unless you step on the front of the vacuum head which is something that's a little bit inconvenient for these bagless hoovers but anyway now with all that said i'm going to turn this thing on and demo it for you guys now this is pretty loud because like i said this is the tti based wind tunnel so it's got a much louder more whiny high pitch motor compared to the maytags so here we go when the vacuum is put into its upright position the mechanical valve actually shuts all the suction going to the head and everything will go through your hose. The suction is fairly decent. It's actually a lot better than I, than I thought it would be. But I do I think the bag versions have much better cool airflow because all the suction coats from right here wraps around the hose 
and goes down and, and connects right down there and into the head. Which, I think Hoover did this mainly to solve the, uh, the airflow problem that some bagless vacuums are, are known to have compared to bag vacuums. Either that or Hoover wanted to be like Dyson and have that mechanical valve in to make all the hose suction a thing when the vacuum is in its upright position. So, anyway, let's go ahead and get out your attachments. Here's one of the extension ones. It's a little hard to connect one handed. crevice tool you got your upholstery tool Dusting brush. And last but not least, we'll go ahead and show you the pet hair turbo tool. Connect it in. Because the brush is our suction driven, this is how it spins. It doesn't spin the fastest because, like I said, this doesn't have the best tool airflow compared to the bag model. But it is good for cleaning up pet hair off upholstery and carpeted stairs. say this thing actually works pretty good and when you're done you can basically just pull the dustbin out pick at the filter you can see you got some dust there coming off sometimes not all of it comes off and you will have to take out the filter and tap it out to get everything out Let's see what this thing picked up in those few passes. Probably didn't pick up much. Like I said, sometimes this thing makes quite a pathetic attempt to open up the bin. But see, there you have it. That is actually, well actually there's more. So, like some of the heavy particles like to get trapped on the little mesh screen. But that's how much this thing picked up, which I will say for a bagless vacuum, this thing does have some respectable performance. And a lot of people make out these twin chamber systems a pain to clean out, and they're not good on performance, but but here's what I say is as long as you wash the filter like or clean out the filter like you're supposed to, I should say, this thing will perform better and probably even better than any of those garbage names like Dyson or Shark. But actually Sharks I think is much better than Dyson, but I digress. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video of the Hoover Wind Tunnel Anniversary Edition Bagless Upright. Be sure and stay tuned and don't forget to like, rate, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.